I am very pleased and honored to have with me uh, on the coming in by phone and Skype, uh, Tim Canova. He is the progressive candidate challenging Representative Desi, uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz uh, from Florida's 23rd District for her congressional seat. And Tim, welcome. Thank you. Very it's nice to be with you, Tom. Great, great to have you with us. I've been uh, uh, I, I, a long time, well, not a, not so much a long time, but I, I, I'm I'm very concerned about the the Debbie Wasserman Schultz, both as the head of the DNC and also, um, you know, many of her positions um, uh, just uh, kind of, uh, creep me out. But um, so tell tell us about yourself. Well, uh, I am a law professor at Nova Southeastern University in Fort Lauderdale, mm -hmm. and I've been a law professor for the past twenty years. Uh, I teach business and banking law. Uh, my research interests are mostly uh, the Federal Reserve, financial markets. Uh, prior to practice, prior, prior to teaching, I was a, a lawyer in uh, in New York City and uh, with a prestigious firm, and uh, for a few years in Manhattan. And uh, and I had been a legislative aide on Capitol Hill for the late U.S. Senator Paul Songitz. Wow! Uh, I've been an activist most of my life. Uh, and have taken part in a, a number of uh, issues related to trade, uh, the anti-globalization, anti-corporate globalization movement that was centered around Seattle. Uh, I was involved in uh, helping to abolish felony disenfranchisement in New Mexico when I taught at the University of New Mexico. I was involved in the Occupy movement. Um, uh, and uh, uh, what else can I tell you about me? Well, your credentials as a as a solid as a progressive seem quite solid. The website, by the way, is timcanova.com. dot com. It's C A N O V A T I M C A N O V A dot com. And uh, Tim, what what led you to uh, even consider challenging one of the most powerful Democrats in the U.S. House of Representatives for her seat? Uh, it really goes back to last summer and her vote on the fast track to fast track the Trans Pacific Partnership. Uh, I was involved, uh, have been involved with uh, a coalition here in South Florida that has been opposed to the Trans-Pacific Partnership um, for a lot of reasons. And uh, this, uh, my opposition really it stems out of the work I had done on international trade law. I've been teaching it for many years and writing about it. And uh, we were lobbying her office and uh, not getting very far, not, not getting really any response whatsoever. And she was one of the very few Democrats, the only Democrat in, in, in Florida, to vote to fast-track this agreement, which I think would be a disaster for this country. Uh, and um, at that time when she voted, uh, I, along with others, uh, thought somebody should really be challenging, challenging her in the primary. I, I didn't think it should be me. I, I mean, I didn't consider it, to tell you the truth. Um, but... Um, over the uh, next few months, uh, it occurred to me that uh, nobody else was stepping up. And uh, I do believe we're at a crossroads right now in this country where ordinary citizens need to step up. Uh, if we just surrender the field to uh, corporate-dominated politicians, we're going to get corporate-dominated policies, which have been a, a disaster for this country. Yeah. I've been, uh, as as uh, her, her tenure as head of the DNC, I've been trying to uh, push out a... a uh, uh, a, a Twitter hashtag uh, Wassergate, uh, and and you know it doesn't seem to be catching hold, but it just seemed to me that uh, she has committed political malpractice for the Democratic Party. In addition to you know disagreeing with some of her political positions as a member of Congress, what are your thoughts on that? Well, um, I have been focusing more on her votes in Congress and her representation of Florida and of her district. Um, uh, but I do think the two are related. Uh, as she's been more uh, representing big corporate, national, multinational corporate interests, uh, it has taken her away from good representation of her constituents. And I do think that her embrace of these multinational corporations and their agenda has been a disaster for the Democratic Party. It, it has not been seen by many people as a party that stands consistently for their own interests. Um, during her time as the DNC, I mean, the facts speak for themselves. Um, the Democrats have lost control of the Senate, uh, suffered terrible losses in the House. Uh, so we now have uh, the largest Republican majority in half a century, I believe. And the way she's been handling the DNC in terms of the presidential election and the debates, 
some have argued or worried that uh, we could lose the White House as well. Um, so we need a uh, different kind of Democrats uh, that uh, clearly stand for progressive values and stand up for the American people. Uh, not for corporate persons, but for for real life human beings with yeah. flesh and blood. You know, back in '87, uh, 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 Al Fromm had this idea that the Democratic Party uh, could no longer survive, given how effectively Ronald Reagan had been eviscerating unions. Um, and uh, you know, the unions were a principal source of revenue to the to the Democratic Party. And then, and the Republicans were also going after trial lawyers, another major source, uh, with so-called tort reform. And uh, so Al Fromm basically came up with the idea of why don't we get in bed with some of the less toxic corporations, the ones that aren't you know, you know raping the earth. Uh, how about bankers? They they seem like they've got clean hands. <laughs> and so you know, and he went down to he made a pilgrimage down to Arkansas. He writes about it in his book. Uh, to meet uh, Governor Bill Clinton, who he thought was a rising star in the Democratic Party. He said, come along with me on this, help create the Democratic Leadership Council. We will do, he, his phrase, a bloodless coup within the Democratic Party, and I'll make you president. And that's exactly what happened. So we've got basically the Democratic Party pre-92 that was FDR and Keynesian, and I would I would argue that pretty much every Democratic presidential candidate from from Franklin Roosevelt to uh, Jimmy Carter, by and large, uh, held many of the positions, even if they couldn't do them, that Bernie Sanders does. But since then, the Democratic Party has been in many places, you know, far more corporate. Um, it seems to me like you're representing the FDR wing of the of the party, and Debbie Schultz, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, is representing the the Clinton wing of the of the Democratic Party. Am I being oversimplistic in that bifurcation and that analysis? No, not at all. I see it very much the same way. I'm very proud to be in the Franklin Roosevelt, John Kennedy, New Deal tradition of the Democratic Party. And I do think there was a bloodless coup. Um, it, it, it really uh, shifted the, the country and the party, unfortunately, to a more corporate orientation and anti-union orientation. It's been terrible for the middle class and the poor. And um, we need to be pushing back. Uh, there's so much at stake for so many people in this country and in the world. Yeah, yeah. We're talking with Tim Canova. He is a progressive candidate challenging in the primary Debbie Wasserman Schultz in Florida's 23rd district. His website is Tim Canova, T-I-M-C-A-N-O-V-A.com. Tim, we just have a few seconds left. Um, how is the campaign going and what can people do to help? It's going great so far. Uh, we launched last Thursday and uh, just over the weekend, over a three-day period, uh, we received contributions from more than a thousand individuals. Oh, that's wonderful. All donations, but they add up. And, yeah. Uh, I'm not taking corporate money. Um, I believe in people power, and uh, we need to continue raising money. We can't win this election if we don't have the resources to help pay for a ground army. Uh, right. And uh, people can help by contributing just whatever they can afford. Uh, and go to my website, as you said, timcanova.com or timcanovaforcongress.com, uh, and spread the word. Uh, the word is spreading. You know, most congressional campaigns are fortunate if they get 2,000 Facebook followers. Uh, our campaign Facebook page got 3,500 Facebook followers in three days. Wow, that's wonderful. TimCanova.com is the website. Tim, thank you. To watch more clips from our programs, hit the Watch More Videos button over here. And please be sure to hit the handy-dandy subscribe button so you'll always be up to date. Tag, you're it.